Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a fun project that will help you get to know your markers. And there's a real-time version of this up in Critique Club if you would like to check it out. I'll put the link in the video description. I'm using some acrylic-based marker pens. They are a dual-tipped pen, kind of like a Tombow marker. And I thought it would be fun to just kind of draw some marker, uh, draw some marbles. I wanted to play with these markers and I really, I'd used them, um, well, let's see, I've had them since February and I've used them just kind of as little accents over mixed media pieces such as gouache and watercolor and things like that. And they were fine, but they just didn't have the opacity that I would really kind of expect with an acrylic marker. And the more I use these, the more perplexed I was by them. So they're, they're a really fun medium to draw with, but they do not strike me as acrylic paint pens. And I have actually reached out to the brand about this the Artix company that makes them because I don't think they're uh, they're true acrylic pens. For one thing, when you get them, you don't have to pump them. They're ready to go, which usually if you get a new set of acrylic paint pens, you got to, you know, set aside about a half an hour to get those puppies started if it's like a set of 12 or longer if it's a bigger pack. But that's so that they don't dry in the in the uh, nibs. So the fact that these brush nibs were juicy and flexible and ready to roll, I was just pretty surprised by that. So I thought it'd be fun just to kind of play with this. And I have a box of marbles that I take out every once in a while just to use as a still life setup. I don't know what I got them for, but probably for still life setup. I don't know. Uh, but they've been kicking around forever. So I threw some down on some white cloth and used them as uh, inspiration for this piece. Now, if you don't have a circle template to draw out all the circles, just find some round things and trace around them. And uh, you could freehand them for sure, but I gotta tell you, by the time you're adding paint and you're adding marker, it's so easy to get those lines out of perfect uh, circular goodness. So at least starting with the perfect circle is very helpful. So uh, that's what I do. You can do whatever you wanna do, but that's what I do. Now this was my first hint that maybe these were not uh, truly acrylic markers. The, the tip of this white one was turning blue. And I was like, that's kind of strange. Generally, you know, if you've let the, the marker dry, it's not going to turn color on you. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe I didn't let it dry long enough. That could be, that could be it. I'm, I tend to be kind of impatient. So I grabbed a, uh, a brush with some water on it and I started to blend a bit. So then I was thinking, okay, yeah, I'm, I probably just didn't let it dry long enough. So I'm just gonna keep proceeding with that. And I, when I wanna blend, I will go in there with a wet brush. And then otherwise I will, um, I will just kind of let things dry and layer up. Now here's when I realized that these markers are really good for tip to tip blending. So if you go in with a dark color and then you go in with a lighter color to blend it out, it works really good. And then you can just scribble your marker on some scrap paper for, uh, for cleaning it off. The markers have a lot of pigment in them or a lot of color in them anyway. So when I add just a little touch of indigo, it really took over that shadow on that, um, that marble there. So it was just kind of getting used to how pigmented the product is and its working capabilities and how responsive the brush nib was. So that's why I say this is a really good exercise for getting to know a different medium, getting to know a different set of brushes, um, just getting used to your um, getting used to your materials. If you are going to use a different media though, just make sure your paper is compatible with whatever you're using so that you don't have frustration. So if you wanted to do this, for instance, with alcohol-based brush markers, you would want to use a paper that is more compatible with that, probably like a marker paper or a um, blending cardstock or whatever your preference is for a alcohol marker. Just make sure your paper or your surface matches the media. Otherwise, it's just gonna be really frustrating. This mixed media paper, it's the Bamboo Mixed Media by Ahenemy. This worked perfectly for these markers. This actually would work with a lot of different media, um, but I think if I was going to do markers, I still would opt for like a Bristol or a um, like a marker paper. That, that's just my opinion, but you know, just go go with the paper that you like the uh, that you like the use of. Basically, you could test some new brushes out with like your watercolors or gouache or acrylics. It's just a great way to get to know something. It's a fairly simple project. We're just doing circles, and then we're just making the swirls and waves within the circle. So it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of meditative, really. It's kind of like, um, you know, it's kind of like that neurographic art we were doing. It's just kind of, um, it's just kind of calming. And, uh, when you have something simple, it's kind of like swatching, you know, when you get something new, when you swatch it out, this is kind of like swatching. You are creating something realistic, but you are having that kind of, um, 
I don't want to say mindless because it's almost meditative. I don't really think meditation is mindless. It's more just kind of like just getting in the art zone and um, and creating and, and having fun and not being worried about the outcome of the project. So that's what I want to say. I want you to, to practice your your uh, your with your supplies, whatever they may be. I will put a link to this product in the video description if you want to check it out. It's available on Amazon and I think it's around, it was on sale for I think around $22 and there was also a coupon on top of that. I think the regular price on the set of 32 was around 30 bucks. Um, if you like Tombow markers, I think you're going to like these and I got to say they almost just seem like an opaque Tombow marker because the way that they blend out, I actually played around blending these with Tombow markers and they worked really well together. Um, it's almost like gouache in a brush pen, basically. Or you know what it really is like? It's kind of like chalk markers. I'll have a full review on this on this product. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to post it, but it'll be coming along. It'll be coming down the mountain. It'll be coming around the mountain <laughs> pretty soon, I suppose. Um, I'm always working ahead, especially getting ready for summertime and some, uh, and some time off I'll be planning, but man, they're just really fun to use. I have to say that it was very intuitive, maybe because I'm used to Tombow markers, maybe because I'm used to gouache. I'm not sure. The ink reminds me of chalk marker ink, but the thing I never really liked about chalk markers is how scratchy the, and streaky the nibs would be. And especially, um, after you used it for a bit, the nibs would just kind of soften up and be just kind of like, you wouldn't get a sharp line with it anymore. Um, so I think if you've been looking for chalk markers, you know, that's actually going to write decently or write pretty. Like if you, if you have really good penmanship, cause the nibs are really soft and, um, and springy and flexible. I think these would be a really good substitute for chalk, chalk markers. I tried writing on a jar, like a mason jar, like a, a glass basically. And I was able to let it dry and wipe it off with a wet rag. So you definitely could use these like chalk mark, chalk markers and they would be easier to control. And you know, they're really not any more expensive than chalk markers either. And I feel like the bra the, the nib quality is much better. So that's just my opinion. I don't know. I did, um, I did write to the brand and said, you know, I don't think these are acrylic. And I gave them my reasons why. And they said they were going to, um, they were going to update their listing. So hopefully they do because they're, they're listing that it's good for rock painting right now. And I'm like, I think that would just chew those nibs up. It would just be too rough for them. Um, and also the coverage is not that opaque. It's not as opaque as, uh, as an acrylic paint pen. So that's why I'm using white paper. A lot of times with acrylic paint pens, I love acrylic paint pens for going over darker areas when I want like a white highlight on something dark, or I want to, um, put an opaque passage of pigment somewhere. Opaque passage of pigment. Uh, <laughs> that little phrase kind of is fun. Fun to say, opaque passage of pigment. You should say it. Just say it. Say it. It's fun. Um, no peer pressure or anything. But anyway, that's what I use acrylic paint pens for. And that's not, th these were not good for that um, in the times that I used it with other paintings. But on their own, on white paper, they're kind of fabulous. And this was the project that I used to discover that. And I think you can make some pretty cool discoveries about the products you already have in your stash by doing a simple, uh, a simple drawing like this. In fact, you could do the circles and you could do make them planets and you could do galaxy in the space around them. Um, that would be fun. You could ma even mask off. You could even do the, um, you could paint the galaxy first and then draw the circles. There's so many things you can do. I think I use that circle template. I, I got that back when I was teaching in my studio downtown, I think that was late, late nineties. And I still use that thing on a weekly basis. I'm always grabbing the thing out of my drawer. It's in my office where I film because I use it so often. And then you could just see me clearing off the nib on a piece of scrap paper. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's super useful and I think they're even cheaper now and you can get like packs that have more sizes in it on Amazon. If you, you know, if you want one of those, it's, um, you know, definitely good to have, I think. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the gray pen and I am putting in the shadow and I'm not sure at this point if I want to do any wrinkles in the fabric or if I just want to get that, um, that shadow with the burst of white in the center, the, uh, not white, really. It's a burst of light in the center. Uh, the opaque marbles obviously don't have that. Um, so that's what I'm doing right here. This is a palette of 32 colors. There's one gray and this gray works really good for this. Um, on areas where I needed a darker gray, I ended up using the indigo cause it was almost kind of like a Prussian blue color. Actually there's, there's names on the swatch that they give you that comes in the box, but, um, there's numbers on the pens. I honestly don't really, I, I just go with the most common names for the colors. I don't really 
look at the swatches, to be honest. I just kind of, I don't know, just kind of go with it, I guess. Uh, I rely on swatches less and less as time goes on. Uh, you can let me know in the comments below if that's the case for you or if you always have to have that swatch there. Also, I think the more often you use a product, the less you need the swatches. Now here I'm cleaning up some of my rough edges with some Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. That's another product I recommend that most everybody have. That's a wonderful little jar of super duper opaque gouache that you can thin down. Um, it's just really strong. It's wonderful. If you, it hardens up on you, you could add some water to it. It comes in a little, just a little tiny glass jar. I've been using this one for probably Mm, six or seven years and I'm halfway through it. Um, you know, very, very slow wearing. I, I use the, the squash a lot. I'm using it for the bright white highlights on the marbles to give it a shiny appearance and um, for cleaning up the edges. It works really well for that. Now, it's still opaque even if you thin it down and that's one thing. I didn't thin it down enough. I'm going to do some what I want to be softer, re softer highlights, like bounced highlights when you have like, or bounced reflection, when you have like light bouncing off the table and going back on the marbles, see like there on that blue and orange one, that's way too opaque. And I thought, well, you know, that's gonna get a little bit more translucent as it dries. It didn't, even though I had added some white into that gouache, it was still really bright. So I ended up having to fuss with those a little bit and soften them, but, um, Hopefully you won't make that mistake. You will uh, You will be wise to that. You'll be like, whoa, Lindsay told me that's still going to be pretty opaque. I better really water it down. Or maybe use the white marker from the uh, from the Arctic paint set, pen set if you have it, because that would probably have given me just about what I needed there. Now I'm adding little tints of color into the highlights that are inside of the shadows on the table there just to give it that kind of, if you look at the marbles over on my cloth, you can see like some of them, you see a little color in that highlight. So that's what I'm doing there. Just scribbling the marker on the tape and just picking it up with my brush so I don't get too much. And um, I think that works pretty well. And then I decided I did want to have a little bit of fabric in mainly because I taped my paper down and I love to see a nice border when I take my tape up. So it is kind of a, um, you know, not a necessity, but it's, you know, I took that, I wasted the tape. I want to have a border. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> it's like, I got to see that border. And there I'm kind of messing with that marble and regretting it, honestly. And that marble got a little less, a little less rounder. The, uh, it got a little misshapen the longer we are on this marble painting journey, but, um, it's fun. It's practice. It's getting to know your materials. And really that's, that's exciting. It's exciting to figure out what you can do with the stuff you already have. And it's also exciting to try new things. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial or this time lapse. And if you do want the full tutorial, you can find it up now in Critique Club at lindsayweirick.teachable.com. Link is in the video description. Thank you so much for watching today. I do appreciate you. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy crafting.